All right, I've got a word on my heart from Isaiah 43. It's going to start this series on reset. If this speaks to you, come back all through January because this is what we will center our heart around, reset. Isaiah 43, 16 says, this is what the Lord says. He who made a way through the sea, a path through the mighty waters. He drew out the chariots and the horses, the army and reinforcements together, and they lay there, never to rise again, extinguished, snuffed out like a wick. That last part, it has just been resonating. I think in 2024, when the enemy comes against me, I'm just going to say, God's going to snuff you out like a wick. (laughs) There we go. This is the Lord saying this. This is the Lord saying this. Continuing, forget the former things. Do not dwell on the past. See, I'm doing a new thing. Now it springs up. Do you not perceive it? I'm making a way in the wilderness and streams in the wasteland. Now I have to stop because the Lord just itemized the greatest beginning, the origin story of Israel. Again, he said, I made a way through the sea. I made a path through the mighty waters. I drew out the chariots, the horses, the army, and the reinforcements. I got them all together. And when I had them at just the right place, I snuffed them out like a wig. I'm sorry, but that's gangster right there. That's just like (laughs) snuffed them out like a wig. This is God, again, he's itemizing. He doesn't just say, remember the Red Sea? It was awesome. No, he itemizes, and then he says, now forget that. Forget that. And yet, if you go through just the rest of Exodus and Deuteronomy following this great event, In just short readings, you'll find 17 different times where God says, remember, remember, remember. Don't forget what I did when I brought you out. Don't forget the plagues that I put on Pharaoh. Don't forget I sent Moses and his brother Aaron, but don't forget I, I, through them, led you out. Don't forget, and he even told them how to set up memorials so that when their kids would ask, hey, what does these stones mean? They could rehearse the story so that they wouldn't forget it. Track with me now. Don't forget, and here he's saying, forget about it. Let's keep going. The festivals of Israel, they celebrate. What do they celebrate? How God brought them out. Most every celebration they have ties back to their slavery that was broken by the power of God and then the consuming power of God that took the enemy out, snuffed them out like a wick. And he said, this enemy you see today, you will see no more forever. It is, it is these celebrations that cause them to remember. And again, here in Isaiah, he itemizes. I made a way, a path drew them out, the horses, the army, the reinforcements together, laid them there never to rise again. Forget the former things. 
Look at the NLT. Now go there. Here's what NLT says. But forget all that. Yet he says over and over again, remember, remember, remember. So he's not saying forget because you can't forget. Here's what he's saying. Forget all that. Woo! You can read. Look at that. It. Wait a minute. Wait. He itemized. Talked about all he did. And snuffed them out like a wick and says, but it is compared to what I am going to do. <laughs> Happy New Year, everybody. You're dismissed. <laughs> All right. We got to work with this. There, there, there's just so much here. It would seem to me that the Lord is sending a very strong message to the people of Israel and to us. Let me put this statement up. There's still more. Are you with me on that? Perhaps think of it this way. If the Holy Spirit just sat with you in physical form and rehearsed the Lord's faithfulness to you and itemize God's faithfulness over the years. So just think how awesome that would be. Remember that time? And then the Holy Spirit would be able to show you things that God did for you that you knew nothing about. Those times that he protected you, those times that the guardian angel was there. So imagine that. And the Holy Spirit just this and this and this, and you're like, and that. And he goes, yeah, mm -hmm, that. And, and then the Holy Spirit says, now forget about all that. Now you can't forget, but what he's saying is, say it with me, there's. Let's say it like this. God's not finished. You've been serving God a long time but God's not finished. This church, those of you that are new here, this church started over 100 years ago. There are people here that told me today, they, they know of Pastor Tom Goins, who was the pastor when this property was purchased. What a vision. Man, how awesome that, that God led Pastor Goins and the leadership of that time to come out here, the turnpike didn't exist. These neighborhoods didn't exist. And they purchased this property. And they had no idea in the 90s when they were getting that, that in 2024, we would be opening yet another incredible ministry center to serve the whole county. So... That, that, uh, that immediate nucleus of people that gathered over a hundred years ago saw amazing things. But here we are, ending 2023, gonna roll into 2024, and I wanna say it, God's, come on church, not finished. <laughs> Woo. I feel a press on this. This, this was not prepared. I just feel oppressed to say when you really get that in your heart, that God's not finished, then it moves to he's not finished with you. There's still more he wants to do in and through you. And it doesn't matter what your age is. God's not finished. He's not finished with you and doing things through you. I think about it like this. He's going to give us a new reference point. I think that helps us understand why God would itemize the greatest miracle in Israel's history and then tell them to forget it. He's not saying forget it. 
He's saying, I'm going to give you a new reference point. Can you put back NLT up for just a moment? Put that back up. Forget about it. Well, you can't forget about it. He's saying up until now, if you sat with anybody, you would say, let me tell you about the Red Sea. But because there's still more, because God's not finished, he's saying, I'm going to give you something else to talk about. Something like, I'm telling y'all, this word got a hold of me. Something better than the, yeah, I'm going to give you a new reference point because it's nothing compared. Some of you have experienced this in your own life, just this defining moment, maybe years ago. And for years, that was the reference point of God's dramatic power in your life. But God has still, has continued to work. And you rarely talk about that anymore because there's another reference point. Yesterday I was traveling back in uh, and I was getting on a plane and the flight attendant, as people were coming on the plane, was going, Happy New Year. And this guy in front of me to the flight attendant who said, Happy New Year, he said, maybe not. (laughs) Womp, 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 there's always that person. (laughs) Maybe not, maybe not. And so what's a flight attendant supposed to do? Even Southwest flight attendants don't know how to handle that. (laughs) Maybe not, and so as he continued to walk, the flight attendant says, keeping it real, kind of like he's keeping it real. Because maybe it's not going to be. So he says to me, Happy New Year. I go, absolutely. (laughs) Like, I've been living in this word. Like, absolutely. Does that mean I'm not keeping it real? That means my experiences don't define who God is to me. God defines my experiences. Come on, church. Come on, church. God is God. God is good. God is in control. God is sovereign. God is very God. Happy New Year. Absolutely. And that's not just being positive. But all these people who want to rain on being positive, you want to be negative? Welcome to negative, church. Let's just be negative. Let's keep it real. Life is just... Let's keep it real. No, God is good, and things happen that catch us by surprise, but not God. Things knock the wind out of us, and we don't know what to do or how to respond, but God is still in control. Oh, I I look back over 2023, there were some tough times. But those experiences didn't define God. God defined those experiences. And so what happens? We get a new reference point. That through it all, let me say it, through it all, God is faithful. God is good. And he's worthy to be praised. Put some praise right there for a minute. He's worthy to be praised. I sat down. And you know how it would be. I sat down, and I'm by that guy, the, the maybe not guy. <laughs> the best thing to do when you sit by maybe not is open your Bible. <laughs> and I opened my Bible. And honestly, I was reading Isaiah and just kept on reading. And I read into Jeremiah. Y'all, I've read something. When I got into Jeremiah 16, and I know it's always been there, but I've never seen this like this before. Let me show it to you. Man, it's rushing over me just like it did yesterday. However, the days are coming, declares the Lord, when it will no longer be said, as surely as the Lord lives, 
who brought the Israelites up out of Egypt. It'll no longer be said, but it will be said. New reference point, here it comes. As sure, surely as the Lord lives, who brought the Israelites up out of the land of the north and out of the countries where he banished them, for I will restore them to the land I gave their ancestors. So the reference point has been Red Sea, but now it's going to be thousands upon thousands of acres, houses they did not build, a land that has a flow. The description is milk and honey, which is a land that's going to provide basics and blessings. Remember the land? Remember the spies? And they came back with a cluster of grapes. Like, we've never seen grapes like this. They came back with a report of how awesome, because God was wanting to give his people a new reference point. Can you put that point back up for me? New reference point. Here in 2024, God is going to give you a new reference point. Receive that today. I don't know what it'll be for you. You, you may have an idea of what's been going on, what would be. God's going to do it. I was reflecting when I was 25 years old. My God, that was a long time ago. <laughs> and I'd been pastoring for two years. I started pastoring when I was 23. Oh, the honor of getting to be a pastor. I got to start when I was 23. By the time I was 25, we needed to build a church bigger than the one we had. I was pastoring my home church. When I was 10 years old, they put up a picture, a framed picture of 40 acres of land. When I was 10 years old, I remember the church going through the process of purchasing that land. When I was 10 years old, the church was thriving and growing. We went through some tough seasons. Never had gotten to move the church. I had no idea when I was sitting there at 10 years old that at 25 years old, I would be the lead pastor saying it's time to move. I stood in front of that church and said, as you can see, we need more space. And we cast the vision, showed them the architectural design of this new church and it was 1995, and it would cost one million. It was 93. It would cost one million dollars. And in 1993, I had no reference point for raising money, leading vision, leading relocation, where people had been saved, where families had so many memories, and what it would be like to transfer the energy of a church, as well as raise the resources to build it. And so we had cast vision, but now we turn the corner to a new year. We are six weeks from the big day where everybody will pledge and start their giving so that we can move forward. And someone broke into our church and they set it on fire and burned down all of the offices. Smoke so damaged the auditorium that we couldn't meet for weeks. And I always tell this because when you're old, you repeat the same jokes. I always wanted to uh, pastor a church on fire. <laughs> but that's not what I had in mind. Okay, I won't tell that again until March. Um, so, so there we are, no offices. And back then, students, check this out. There was no internet. I know, somebody just went, I know, I know, I know, no internet, no email. You can't just say, well, just send everybody an email. Just blast a text out there and say, the church has been burned down, but we're still going forward. So we had all these limitations. We do the best we can, find a place together for that Victory Sunday to pledge. 
And on that morning at eight o'clock, it started snowing. And in South Arkansas, the least amount of snow, it just shuts everything down completely. And I watched 50% of a normal crowd show up. And so fire and snow and 25 years old, I don't have a reference point to say, I've been through this before. This was all new. And I watched God. I watched God. I watched God do a miracle. There was one person who saw a bunch of cars in a parking lot and just pulled over and said, what's going on here? And just stayed for church and, and gave an offering. God can do it. And God did it then. And so I've thought about that as we started this new building needing to raise seven million. And I just honestly didn't know how that would happen. Didn't know we could hit that mark over a three-year period, which is the goal, raise seven million in three years, then the building will be paid off. And we've been doing this just over 15 months. Had you told me 15 months ago that we would bring in over five million of the seven million in the first, say, 15 months, I'd have said, well, that'll be a new reference point. I'm sitting with you. I'm sitting with you right now with a new reference point. In 2023, we've given more to missions than ever in the history of the church. At the same time, at the same time, we brought in over five million for this activity center that will open in just about three weeks. I came with a word today. God says it doesn't even compare with what I have done with what I'm about to do. Come on, help me somebody. Help me somebody. New reference point. I, I don't know what that needs to be for you, but you do, and I just share that as encouragement to you. Let me put this up. I think God is saying that we should look forward and live forward. So just put that on the screen for us. Just live forward. We know that past hurt can cause you to be apprehensive about the future and you're, you're, you can get preoccupied with the past. But past victories can cause you to be preoccupied with the past. Where all you do is live out of memory and you quit living out of imagination. And God saying to Israel, forget all of that for it doesn't even compare with what I'm about to do. They don't have a paradigm, a construct, a schema, a perspective, a reference point for God doing something greater than delivering them from 400 years of slavery and defeating their enemy so dramatically. And yet God is saying it doesn't compare with what I'm about to do. And he's saying, you can't forget it, but think about your rearview mirror and your windshield. Like the windshield is so much bigger because you need to live forward. And if you if you, you think with me a moment on this, that's all you can do. There's no option. You, you can only live forward. Have you, have you ever gotten turned around? Maybe in a a new city. I I did this one time. I'm. I'm going down this road, and I'm like, these are the nicest people I've ever, everybody's waving at me. <laughs> and then I realized I'm on a one way, and I'm going the wrong way on the one way. These people aren't nice. And I, then it dawned on me, because one guy was telling me I was number one. And, uh, <laughs> and so you can only live forward. You can only live forward. You can only live forward. Like, no matter what, we can't turn it back. You can't. So have the rearview mirror. Because we got to be like David. I need miracles in my memory so that I can say the same God who will. 
But that's what the memory is for. But I don't want to put God in a box and I want to know, can I relax the boundaries of my current reference point and actually believe that in 2024, God wants to do something that's beyond anything he's ever done in my life, in your life, and in this church. As you live forward, I would say a few things. Let's break it down, and I will hurry. New life, new life, new life, new life. That's what it is to live forward. If you take your smartphone along the way, you, if you choose to, you can do what's called a hard reset. And a hard reset, the definition is this, the restoration of a device to the state it was in when it left the factory. The power of God is to make you new. New life is to reset you to God's original purpose. Ah, I like that. The Holy Spirit is a spirit of newness. I can't roll the clock back and start again, but the Holy Spirit, I can't start over, I should say, but the Holy Spirit being a spirit of newness will empower me to start again and reset, reset my heart, my spirit, my mind. Here's this new settings, new settings. Like a phone, we read that in the reset, all settings, applications, and data placed by the user are erased. Coming into 2023, there was this app that uh, boasted of helping with proficiency and time management. And I like those kind of apps and I, I like to use them. I, I use that one, but it, it just, for me, it didn't work. And yet it's still on my phone. So I need a reset because that's taking up space. And this morning it popped up on my phone, a new app called Motion that guarantees 137% productivity. <laughs> I did the math, Nico, and it says that it'll give you 13 months in a year. Like that's how much time it will save you. <laughs> it will help you with scheduling. It will help you with projects. It w I already have it. <laughs> like, let's go. I'm in my 13th of 12 months. So... All right, I say all this. Do you end up with stuff on here that you don't use? Takes up space, doesn't it? Live life, what happens? You just get, just need some new settings. Maybe some settings that have you bent toward a negative reaction. Instead of being positive, you're negative. You need some new settings. Instead of being faith-filled, you're more doubtful now. Oh, this, the, the doubt that is so rampant that leads to cynicism. That's a setting in this culture. I'm giving a word right now. This is a whole word. There's a setting of cynicism. And it is leading to this deconstruction. And the Holy Spirit wants to reset where I have the setting that he is God and his word is true and heaven and earth will pass away, but not one, I like it, not one jot or tittle will pass away of his word. Come on, somebody. Some of you, you're set to medicate your pain in ways that are damaging your life, making it worse. You're set to this abuse of your body. You're set it's got you in addictions and relationships that are dysfunctional. See, when, when the Lord resets you, you get boundaries and blessings. You can, put a, you can use this phone and set it where you can't be interrupted. 
let's just say from 9 p.m. to 9 a.m. And you can set only those who you want to be able to have any communication with you. Because a setting can create a boundary. And if that frees you up to focus, that setting is creating a blessing. The settings of the Spirit give you convictions. And you get checked, so it creates boundaries. Talk to somebody who gets saved, and they will say this. I used to do this, this, and this. Never thought of, didn't bother me. Now it bothers me when I even think about it. What happened? They got new settings. Yeah. It comes with the relationship. They get new settings. I got to hurry. New plans. New plans. The Lord has plans for you. You get a data plan, a plan that shapes for your needs. The Lord created you. The Lord has plans for you. He's got a plan that shapes around who he created you to be. And that's all involved in this massive reset. As the worship team comes today, I want to lead in a careful close of this service, closing a year and opening another. All of us in some way need a reset. And as I prayed into this service, the Lord gave me very specific things for people. I, I don't know who this is for, but the Lord said, you need to carry this word into a deep place. Don't let this word stay surface and don't let it stay here when church is over. Let this word find a deep place. I'm doing a new thing. Let me, let me, let me put it into context. Itemization of this great miracle. Forget about it as in rear view mirror because it doesn't compare with what God's about. He, God's about to do a new, new, new life through the spirit of newness, new settings, through the power of the Holy Spirit. Like reset, you're in a rut. Let this word go deep. Let this word go deep. God said, challenge somebody to just evaluate. If you're getting the same result and those results don't honor God, it's not the life you know you're created for. It's time for a reset. Like, God, don't, don't live that way another year. You say, well, what do I do? Reset. Let the Lord give you a reset. Yeah. Man, the Lord just said, challenge somebody not to close off their heart. Because the temptation is to say, here we are, new year, pastor's up, rah, 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 new goals, resolutions, we're gonna go to the gym for three days and then we're never going back again. <laughs> and I've done that so much that it's like, I'm just rather closed to the whole idea. No, no, no. The Lord says, don't close off your heart. Don't close off your heart. The Lord just press on my heart to say, would you make room? Would you make room for God to do something new? You gotta make room in your prayer time, your schedule for the prayer time. You make room for Bible time. If you're one of those people that's like, Happy New Year, maybe not. I get that because I've lived long enough life, the residue of challenge, the residue of intense battles, the residue of leadership, the residue of trying to, trying to just do this life. Man, it can get heavy and it can get hard. And you can lose, you can lose your faith. You can lose your faith in God. You can lose your faith in people. It can happen. And you just close off your heart. And you get this narrative in your mind, just like that guy, maybe not. Everything, if God can do it, but maybe not. Want well, to be careful not to be positive, because as you know, and, and you just, 
and, and you run right into what Paul said. Have this mind. Think on these things. And he just goes down a list of what is noble, what is true, what is praiseworthy. And he challenges, and, and you hear something like that, but the maybe nots have, have just like a virus overtaken you. I get it. Man, today, today, right now, hear the Lord saying to you, let's go at it again. Let's get a reset. Let's get a reset to believe, to believe bigger. Here's what he's saying, to change that narrative. To change that narrative from maybe not to when someone says, Happy New Year, it's like, I accept that. I'll go with that. I'm in. Not because of anything, but God is God. And God is good. So I'm in. And let him change the narrative. When doubt and fear take over, you will miss your future. Just like Israel, the 10 spies said, yes, they're there are clusters of grapes, but like this land has got such a, a nutrition in the soil that the yield, the harvest is unlike anything we've ever seen. Yes, but the giants are there and, and, they go, and we're grasshoppers in their sight. Wait a minute, you've never talked to them? They're projecting on them how they think they see them. And when that insecurity overtakes you, you will get a sample, a taste of where God wants to take you. But then the grasshopper complex takes over and doubt keeps you in that same place. And we come to a weekend like this and you're still getting the same result. Break the cycle. Break the cycle. God is about seasons. Break the cycle. Finally, finally. Honestly, when that, I walked into that office and I'm walking through the ashes of a church that had been burned down. And honestly, I said, oh, we must be doing something good or the devil wouldn't be fighting so hard. When I was 25 and it started snowing on that Sunday, I like, God's about to show people it's nothing with God to do this by many or by few. I was like in my youthful Ignorance. I was anesthetic. Can't even say it. Anesthesia. Something. Numb. That's it. Numb. I would. I didn't have. I didn't have the experience to even know how to worry about that. See what I'm saying? Because I never built anything anyway. So I'm just like. Oh. Now I'm 58. And I got to make sure that when God says, hey, cast the net on the other side. But God, God, I'm 58. Let me talk to you about fishing. You're a carpenter. Like these fish are biting. It's the middle of the day. They're not, they're not. See, then I let my experience shape my faith rather than God. If God said, and it's okay to say, well, they, I've never seen this work, but nevertheless, at your word, at your, I, I've never seen this before, but at your word, I, I think we're breaking through right now. Woo! At your word, I don't know, but at your word, I don't know how I'm gonna overcome this, but at your word, at your word, at your word, at your word. 
at your word, at your word. Morning to dancing, beauty for ashes, water parted, highways through the sea, graves into gardens, armies out of a valley, a 